time now for our rants and raves of the week. And I'm going to start with Marjorie. Well, this is both a rave and a rant. A rave uh, for it's Trudy Lieberman from the Columbia Journalism Review, who wrote a great piece. Jim and I had her on the radio, the Boston Public Radio, this weekend. She was talking about how poorly we in the media reported on Obamacare. The great line, uh, if you keep your plan, it, that Obama said over and over again, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. Well, apparently, those people covering uh, health care knew all along, or should have known all along, that that wasn't true. Just this week, we found out, or I found out, that CBS News says two million people are not getting to keep their plan because their plan is being canceled. Now, there's good reasons. It doesn't meet the basic criteria. But her point was, where were we in, in reporting this? So, um, And her argument was, rather shockingly, that a lot of the reason the press did not, the mainstream press did not report this. And by the way, Fox News was saying this all the time, you're not going to be able to keep your plan, you're not going to be able to keep your plan, was because those who were reporting it on the other side of the aisle politically wanted Obamacare to succeed. So um, shame on us for not doing a better job and for, uh, and that was just one example she gave. There were a lot of examples about Obamacare that should have been known sooner. Uh, we didn't know them. We might have avoided this mess this week. Well, but to counterbalance that, though, I think uh, shame on the media today for pretending that this, that you can't keep your plan is a much bigger phenomenon than it actually is. Two million people out of a nation of 320 million. If you look at those two million people, they were people who had essentially junk health they insurance. They did. They did. Yeah. But, so, but, just, but I think, I think if you look that. at a lot of the reporting that's gone on in the last week or two, it has made it seem like everyone's getting their plan taken away from them. And also, it's actually a tiny slice of the market. Obamacare may cost them less than mm. those junk plans. So that's less. right. But for us to take that line from the yeah. president over and over and over again yeah. and not to it's question not it. You're right. You're right. Um, I think was a problem. All right, we're going to print her um, piece on our website. It's a great piece. Too, so mm -hmm. we'll know it. All right, Dan, what do you got? I have a rave for Kevin Cullen of the Boston Globe, who wrote a uh, column in the Friday yeah. paper uh, yeah. about the meaning of the Red Sox victory in the context of the Boston Marathon bombing. This is a hard topic to take on. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, people have gotten overwrought about this. They've, they've put too much weight on it. Uh, on the other hand, I think some people have been too dismissive of it. I think Kevin got it exactly right, and he gets an extra kudo for never using the phrase Boston Strong in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was important to the region. It was a healing moment. Uh, we shouldn't make too much of it, but we shouldn't ignore it either. I should it also was pitch perfect. give a shout-out to Dan Shaughnessy today, who also more or less made the same point, and at the same time admitted that he was the one predicting the Red Sox were going to come in, I think, dead <laughs> last. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? Shaughnessy wrote a good column, too. He gets a point less because he did use the phrase Boston <laughs> Storm. Yeah. I also want to point out uh, there's a great uh, piece up on Boston Magazine's website by uh, Joe Cahane. I hope, apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name. That goes into how how this win changes the perception of Boston in, in the nation and the sort of Boston hating and Boston loving and the, the balance. It was a really, mm. really well done piece. Mm. All right, Josh, what do you got? Uh, this is as sort of an observation as much as it's a rant or a rave, but ESPN for the first time this month announced that the majority of their digital uh, readers and, and audience was on mobile devices, on smartphones and on tablets, not on desktops and on laptops. This is something, a trend line that we've been seeing coming along, but the fact that now it's actually the majority of the time was a real, real new standard. We're seeing this at places like the New York Times and the BBC and the Guardian, large news and organizations that are realizing we had to make a big shift from a print product or a broadcast product to desktop and laptop computers. We're now having to make another shift to these, to smartphones and to tablets. And it's really gonna be a big shift in how people get their news. We're already seeing it. And and uh, it was interesting to see a, a huge organization like ESPN finally cross that barrier. And it's really annoying when it goes all over your little screen and you can't read it. <laughs> and I don't want to have 900 apps. So anyway, somebody listening, fix that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kelly, what do you got? Um, so this was the debut of Fusion. This is the ABC and Univision coming together, a merging new cable channel, and they fuse, so they call the channel Fusion. The difference is that it was originally supposed to aim at uh, Latino millennials, um, and now they've sort of changed it to all millennials, and it's in English. It's English, English, English language deliberately, easy for me to say, uh, because a great majority of the millennials who are Latino speak English. So this was a way to bring them into, you know, the culture and the news and whatever. I, I was a supporter of this the minute I heard about it. I think it's great. Pay attention to this audience. Blah blah blah. 
I just saw the way in which they presented it this week was that they emphasized the morning show. That So they swapped morning show hosts on Good Morning America and the ones who will be on the morning show on Fusion. And on the Fusion show, it's like, everybody's so happy. We dance all the time. <laughs> and I just felt for all the Latinos going, we are not dancing 24 hours. Thank you very much. It's six in the morning. I'm, we're not really not I, I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. Where, where can we Not work? Comcast. Hey, Comcast, get a grip. I'd like to have it. Uh, well, no, what but, channel is it on? Uh, uh, you can't, uh, just, you don't, it's not carried in this area oh. if you don't have Comcast, is my okay. point. So <laughs> it's being co carried by some of the like uh, cable. Yeah, some of the other places, but not, not on Comcast. And you can I, see I it online like, as well. Yeah, you can see it online. But what's great about it is they do have Jorge Ramos, who is fabulous, uh, has been fabulous on Univision forever, and he has a new show on this channel called uh, America with Jorge Ramos. And he's the one that had Sheriff Joe Arpaio out on his show recently and, and entitled it The Most Hated Man in the Latino Community. So he's, he's got some gravitas. He'll be doing some great stuff. It's going to be good overall, but, mm. you know, they're not, everybody's not dancing 24 hours. All right. Well, finally, <laughs> I have a, um, a rave for mostly NBC and MSNBC and a couple of other newspapers and stations who have finally picked up this really horrible, gruesome story of this 17-year-old boy, Kendrick Johnson, in Atlanta, mm. Georgia who was found dead in a gym mat in January oh. in the high school gym. And allegedly, oh, well, yeah. you know, the kids used to have to hide their sneakers in the mats, and that's why, and, and he dove in head first looking for the sneakers. But there's a lot of missing links in this story, including the fact that um, they had been out on Christmas break for three weeks, and they claimed the mat was moved. Well, if the mat was moved, were the sneakers moved with it? Anyway, um, a number of news organizations have picked this up, and they've been interviewing the parents. The parents are really adamant that this was something beyond just an accidental smothering inside this mat. I don't know what it was. I don't know what the circumstances were, but it's a story that deserves attention. And again, it was a poor black family from the Deep South. Nobody was paying attention to it, and now it's getting some, I think, deserved attention. That's the end of that. Mm -hmm. All right, and that is it for Beat the Press. Tell us what you think. Are you swayed by newspaper endorsements? Does the media lend too much credibility to opinionated celebrities? Tell us at BeatThePress.org. Monday on Greater Boston, two final looks at Boston's mayoral candidates were at home with John Connolly. Meet his wife Meg and their three children. It's organized chaos. Then we're on the streets of Boston with Marty Walsh as he makes his final push before Election Day. That's all Monday on Greater Boston. For all of us, I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.